We do urine dipstick tests all the time and they can be really useful, but you do need to know what you're looking at. So let's look at each part of the test in turn so that we understand what we're trying to ascertain from the urine dip. Leukocytes. This actually measures leukocyte esterase, which is an enzyme produced by neutrophils. So this can be positive if there's a urinary tract infection, particularly if you've also got nitrites. But it can also be present in other external infections, so like a vulval vaginitis or other infections. You can also get leukocytes present when you've got hematuria. So the bottom line here is that leukocytes on their own could be a sign of a urinary tract infection. And I think if you've got clinical suspicion of this, then you should be sending it for a culture. But if you don't, then there's other sources of infection that can be causing leukocytes. So have a think about what else could be going on. Nitrites. Nitrites are the breakdown product of some bacteria such as E. coli. So if you've got nitrites present, that's a pretty good sign that there's a urinary tract infection, but actually they are not very sensitive. So their absence doesn't mean that you don't have a urinary tract infection. The longer the urine's been in the bladder, the more likely you are to get nitrites in the presence of infection. So the bottom line here is if nitrites are positive, it probably means there is a urinary tract infection, but if nitrites are negative, it doesn't rule one out. Blood. Blood can be macroscopic, which means you can actually see it when you're looking, or microscopic, which means you can only see it on the urine dip. If you've got blood along with leukocytes and nitrites, it's probably related to infection. If you've got blood with protein, then you should be thinking about glomerulonephritis. And remember also that menstruation can cause blood in the urine. And there are plenty of other causes of hematuria that we need to have at the back of our minds, and I'll link to a DFTB post on other potential causes. The bottom line here is there's lots of things that can cause hematuria. If you've ruled out acute causes, then it would be worth asking the GP to repeat the urine dip in a couple of weeks when the child is well. Protein. Glomerulonephritis or nephrotic syndrome can cause protein in your urine, but there's other things that can cause it too. Other external stressors such as infection or injury can also cause protein to be present. So the bottom line here is if you get protein, then think about doing a blood pressure, looking for edema. But if you think all's well, then getting a GP to repeat the test in a couple of weeks to check if the protein's resolved is a good plan. Glucose. Small amounts can be seen in children who are unwell or on steroids. But if you've got larger amounts in the urine, then you should be thinking about looking into whether the child could have diabetes or renal disease. So the bottom line here is to consider what could be causing it and check a blood glucose if there's a lot of glucose in the urine. Ketones. Ketones are seen in diabetic ketoacidosis because they're the byproduct of fat breakdown in the absence of being able to use sugar stores. Ketones can also be positive if the child has been vomiting or not eating. It's also worth checking for ketones in a hypoglycemic child because the absence of ketones could suggest that they've got a metabolic problem. So the bottom line here is check a blood sugar if ketones are present and also check ketones in a hypoglycemic child. Bilirubin is conjugated in the liver and it's water soluble. So any excess bilirubin, like if you have liver disease, it's going to be present in the urine. Urobilinogen, which is also not checked on all urine dips, it can be present in normal amounts in the urine, but if you've got higher amounts, so one plus or more, then you need to think about hemolytic disease. The bottom line here is that any bilirubin is abnormal and a urobilinogen of one plus is abnormal. Specific gravity. This is a measure of how concentrated the urine is compared to water. So if the specific gravity is less than 1.005, then the urine is very dilute. This could be because they've had a high fluid intake or it could be because of diabetes insipidus. A high specific gravity means that the urine's really concentrated. So do, are they dehydrated? Do they have signs of edema like in nephrotic syndrome? And there's loads of other causes of having a high urine specific gravity, which need to be at the back of your mind. The bottom line here is that the urine specific gravity should be put in context with the rest of the history and the examination. pH. The urine pH varies, but is usually slightly acidic. There are lots of things that can cause alkaline urine that can include diet, some medications, some urea splitting organisms such as pseudomonas or proteus, metabolic alkalosis or renal tubular abnormalities. Acidic urine can be due to a high protein diet or a systemic acidosis. The bottom line is this test of urine pH isn't very useful on its own. We've gone through urine dipsticks from top to bottom. It should make it easier to interpret from you. If you enjoyed this, you'll enjoy our video about how to do a newborn exam, which you can see here.